Kick-Ass Facts, the Toronto Circus Riots, and the Ontario Baby Derby. Pew, 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 pew. Picture it. Toronto. Or Toronto, if you're not from here. 1855. It happened on a brothel on King Street near Jarvis. A troop of American clowns from a traveling circus were entertaining themselves at the brothel. A brothel also frequented by the Hook and Ladder Firefighting Company, a volunteer firefighting group in the city. Let us diverge for a moment so I can tell you a tale about the Hook and Ladders. It's relevant. At that time... There was no established fire department. When a fire broke out, any brigade in the area would rush to the scene in their horse-drawn engines, whoever got their first called dibs. A couple of weeks before the brothel incident, the hook and ladders arrived at fire on Church Street at the same time as another brigade. Instead of banding together to battle the blaze, all hell broke loose. A fight broke out. As the building burned, the firemen rioted in the street. When the police showed up, they got swept up in the chaos. Firemen were charged. It's now referred to as the firemen's riot. The point is the hook and ladders were not to be fucked with. And fucked with they were. No one seems to agree exactly how... Back to the brothel. No one seems to agree how the fight broke out. Some say it was a particularly loudmouth clown. Others say that the clowns cut in line. Someone else said that the clown knocked the hat off of a fireman's head. It doesn't matter how it started. What matters is that night, the clowns kicked some ass. At least two of the firemen were seriously injured, dragged out of the brothel to safety as the hook and ladder crew retreated. But it wasn't over. Not by a long shot. The next day, a crowd gathered at the circus. Those firefighters had a lot of friends. Word reached the police before the violence broke out, but by the time they got there, it was on like Donkey Kong. People were throwing stones, circus performers and the carnies were able to hold off the mob for a while, but it couldn't last. Eventually, the crowd overwhelmed them, and when the hook and ladders arrived, the fit hit the shan. They stormed the circus with pikes and axes, overturned wagons, pulled down the tents and the big top, and set them on fire. They beat the shit out of the clowns. Circus folk ran for their lives. Some dove into the lake for safety. It was madness. It took the mayor to settle things down. He kept a fireman from killing a clown with an axe by grabbing it out of his hand and called in the militia to take control of the situation. Once things had calmed down, the circus performers came back for their belongings and ran like hell. Of the 17 people who were charged in the riot, only one was ever convicted. Charles Miller Vance, 1854 to 1926, was a Canadian lawyer and financier. He was also president and part owner of the Toronto brewery, O'Keefe Brewery. He also owned racehorses. However... He is best known for his unusual will, which kicked off the Great Stork Derby. He was also known for his love of jokes and pranks, which played on people's greed. Miller's final prank was his will, which says in part, This will is necessarily uncommon and capricious because I have no dependents or near relations and no duty rests upon me to leave any property at my death. And what I do leave is proof of my folly in gathering and retaining more than I required in my lifetime. This will had several unusual bequests. One of my favorites sounds like the plot of a reality show. Three men who were known to despise each other were granted joint lifetime tenancy in Miller's vacation home in Jamaica on the condition that they lived in the property together. It's like the original Big Brother. The tenth and final clause was the largest. It required that the balance of Miller's estate was to be converted to cash 10 years after his death and given to the Toronto women who gave birth to the most children in that time. In the event of a tie, the bequest would be divided equally. The resulting contest became known as the Great Stork Derby or Baby Race or the Ontario Baby Derby. The will survived 10 years of litigation, including attempts by his distant relatives to have it declared invalid. The derby continued uninterrupted. 11 families competed in the baby race. Seven of them were disqualified. Most of the prize was shared between four Toronto women who each had nine children, receiving $110,000 each or $2 million in today's money. Although three of the four had to pay back money to the city of Toronto for relief that they had collected, the estate also paid $12,500 each to two women with dubious claims. The contest inspired a Canadian made-for-television movie called The Stork Derby, which starred the incomparable Megan Follows, who was best known for her role as Anne Shirley in the 1985 Canadian television miniseries Anne of Green Gables. An old co-worker of mine was an extra in Anne of Green Gables. It was a same picture. Anne is on a stage giving an impassioned speech to women. And my co-worker is one of the women in the audience who had to... 